Ladies and gentlemen, hello. I'm Sandra Champlain. I'm host of We Don't Die Radio, and I'd like to welcome you to our very first divine service. We're being aired on Zoom and on Facebook right now, and I'd like to introduce you to Carrie McLeod, who will be our chairperson for our service today. You may be joining us in the morning, the afternoon, or the evening, wherever you are in the world. We welcome you. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever you are in the world, and welcome to our divine service. Thank you, Sandra, for that lovely introduction and putting together those songs for us. So thank you for joining us for our first worldwide divine service, brought to you by Sandra Champlain's We Don't Die Radio and Dunfermline Association of Spiritualists and Kindred Spirits, more commonly known as Dunfermline Ask. Confirm and Ask is a non-denominational independent registered charity in Scotland and we set up in 2004 by Jock MacArthur who became president and was supported by a strong team. He transitioned in 2012 and I took over, again supported by a strong team and we've delivered Sunday services in all those years every single Sunday and we're absolutely delighted to be working with Sandra and her fabulous team this evening to deliver one for you today. So I'd like to thank Sandra and her team for bringing this together. It's the first that I've ever been involved in and it's an absolute pleasure to be able to chair for you. So I should probably introduce myself. My name is Kerry McLeod and I'll be um, looking to take this evening's proceedings, this afternoon's proceedings, through to the end. So the divine service is an experience that should leave your heart and your soul touched by the spirit. So whether it be the reading, the address, the mediumship that touches you, you leave with an experience that allows you to create an awareness or questions that take it further for you in your own journey. So your mediums this evening are Scott Milligan, who will, develop, who will deliver our address, and Philip Dykes, who will deliver the mediumship later on. We also have our lovely Sandra de 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 delivering the um, reading for this evening. So to begin with, in this time of need, the globe and all of its inhabitants are in need of a great deal of healing. So in a few minutes, I'm going to invite you to enter into a moment of healing. That moment where you can send healing to anybody or anything you wish. All that I would ask is that you visualize the planet, the people, or the things you wish to send healing to, whole, hearty, and healthy. We don't want to send them anything more than what they've already got. So let's send some lovely healing energies to them. So can we enter into that silence and allow us to send healing? And I'll say a few words as we do so. We pray that we, we may grow in our understanding of the nature of all living, feeling the connectedness with the developed natural world, that we may become ever more filled with generosity of spirit and true compassion for love and for life that we appreciate the power of every human being reaching to the spirit that's within, knowing the power of everyone to change the world. We offer healing to the planet and to each other to bring new life to the land, to restore the waters, to refresh the air. Teach us how to look into each other, soul to soul, divinity to divinity. Teach us to have tolerance, respect, and care. Help us to have faith beyond faith. Help us regain our noble light. Help us heal our world, transform our hearts. Pour your grace into our souls, for we are ready. I'd now like to enter into the part of the service where we have our address and our philosophy, our mediumship, but first, I'd like to pass the service over to Scott, please, for the opening prayer. Thank you, Kerry, and thank you for everyone who is taking this time to unite as one. So let us begin as one breath, as one heartbeat, as we stand for those who cannot. 
dearest divine and infinite spirit, power of creation. We, your humble servants, have been drawn to this point in our journey of life. May we raise a cup of milk of human kindness that all of us may feel the divine love. May we climb the steps to the altar of peace to bow to the light of your world. May we ask for you to join us at this time as we come empty handed, but say to you all to take what is needed to serve at this time. May the rivers of love melt into the ocean of peace at this time. May all thoughts be given help and healing where is required. And as our brother serves this night, may your world give thoughts and healing to those who need to hear these words. Amen. Thank you very much, Scott. I'd now like to invite Sandra to deliver the reading for the evening. Thank you, Carrie. Are you a carrot, egg, or coffee bean? A young woman went to her mother and told her about her life and how things were so hard for her. She did not know how she was going to make it and she wanted to give up. She was tired of fighting and tired of struggling. It seemed as when one problem was solved, a new problem arose. Her mother took her into the kitchen. She filled three pots with water. In the first, she placed carrots. In the second, she placed eggs. And in the last, she placed ground coffee beans. She let them sit and boil without saying a word. In about 20 minutes, she turned off the burners. She fished out the carrots and placed them in a bowl. She pulled out the eggs and placed them in a bowl. Then she ladled the coffee into a bowl. Turning to her daughter, she asked, tell me what you see. Carrots, eggs, and coffee, she replied. She brought her closer and asked her to feel the carrots. She did and noted that they were soft. She then asked her to take an egg and break it. After pulling off the shell, she observed the hard boiled egg. Finally, she asked her to sip the coffee. The daughter smiled as she tasted its rich flavor. Then the daughter asked, what's the point, mother? Her mother explained that each of these objects had faced the same adversity, boiling water, but each reacted differently. The carrot went in strong, hard, and unrelenting. However, after being subjected to the boiling water, it softened and became weak. The egg had been fragile. Its thin outer shell had protected its liquid interior. But after being through the boiling water, its inside became hardened. The ground coffee beans were unique, however. After they were in the boiling water, they had changed the water. Which are you, she asked the daughter. When adversity knocks on your door, how do you respond? Are you a carrot? an egg or a coffee bean? Think of this, which am I? Am I the carrot that seems strong, but with pain and adversity, do I wilt and become soft and lose my strength? Am I the egg that starts out with a malleable heart, but changes with the heat? Did I have a fluid spirit, but after a death, a breakup, a financial hardship, or some other trial, have I become hard, hardened and stiff? Does my shell look the same, but on the inside am I bitter and tough with a stiff spirit and a hardened heart? Or am I like the coffee bean? The bean actually changes the hot water, the very circumstance that brings the pain. When the water gets hot, it releases the fragrance and flavor. If you are like the bean, 
when things are at their worst, you get better and change the situation around you. When the hours are the darkest and the trials are their greatest, do you elevate to another level? How do you handle adversity, my friend? Are you a carrot, an egg, or a coffee bean? Wonderful, Sandra. Thank you very much for those thought-provoking words. Absolutely wonderful, thank you. Now, before I invite Scott to deliver the address, we're going to move to some music for you to sit within your own space and contemplate, for you to reflect and come together within that great oneness. Thank you for that music, Sandra. It's now the time for I welcome Scott and his inspirers to share with us the address for this service. Thank you, Kerry, and thank you to everyone who is joining us now. I have never faced this opportunity to speak with you in this way ever before. This is new to me, and the situations that we are facing now is new to each other. Never in history, besides a great war that seems to have been and gone that we have been forced to change our way of life at this moment i feel imprisoned within these four walls only able to step out for a moment to return to that place of rest i wonder how a bird that sings so sweetly in the morning is faced with such troubles that mankind is seeing at this time. How a bird awakens to that warm glow of the sun to sing its sweet melody of life. To have faith to step upon a branch, to make that leap and to be caught by the invisible breath of the wind. Today I stood at my window and I heard that sweet melody a sound which has always been there, but maybe I've been too busy to listen or to appreciate that same song I hear every day. To feel the gentle breeze upon my face, like the first time I have stepped out into the openness, to see the drop of rain, to feel its gentle touch, this is new to me, as normally I have a busy existence where I'll go from one place to another, ignoring the very basic and simple signs of nature. I wonder at this moment that each of you here listening to these words are experiencing something new. There is nothing new under our sun, it's just being forgotten. And in this time of uncertainty, we are starting to remember that what was already there. I wonder if a bird that is caged, imprisoned by love, given to a family that love it so, still dreams and sings a song of freedom. The bird is imprisoned by love and we are imprisoned in fear fear for the unknown of this invisible force that seems to touch us and affect so many of our world at this time. As we come together as a family, even though we cannot be in the same room, we are united in the knowledge that we will stand again. I wonder if, really, if we are to think about it, even though at this moment that we are imprisoned, hidden from this world, has this world missed us? Or has it learned this time to get strong once again, as mankind has been vicious, has mistreated something that has been given? 
So this time that we fear is a time of renewal where we may have to step back from our daily thinking to observe what is truly precious in our lives. As the sun sets on our old way of thinking, it seems darkest before the dawn, but a new light will come and we will emerge from this stronger. I wonder if we look at the trees in the summer time full of life and the leaves give voice to the wind that slowly succumbs to the breath of the autumn breeze, changing colour as it kisses goodbye to the branch, falling softly to the earth. Do we miss that leaf? Do we mourn that moment as we look at the tree that was full of life that seems dead now to the touch? As coldness sets in, everything that was in life seems to withdraw within itself. But it needs to, to come back stronger. It needs to move back into the silence, to emerge to the breath of the spring breeze. We look out our wind and the flowers look stronger. The leaves starting to burst from into bud showing that life exists, continues, even though that the tree has lived through hard times. We, as humanity, are being faced the hardest challenge that we have ever existed. How do we respond? How will we change and move from this place? As half this world is imprisoned, as the other half emerges from their darkness. At this moment, people are being faced by an unimaginable sense that we as spiritualists will bind together like we have done this night, trying something new to bring a sense of peace into your own existence. If you are hearing these words, these words are given from my soul to you. As you are awakening to the possibilities that the greatest lie that has been spoken, that has been written, is death. Death has come to give us more life. It is not the end of our existence, our bodies that have grown with us with our breath must rest once again but our soul is eternal and will move into a world we call unseen a world in which we've come from and which we will return to so as we start to write a new chapter of our lives dipped in the oil of love if i am to place a pen within your hand what will you write differently what moment will you take a breath and listen to the sweet melody of the bird outside who sings so sweetly without a care in the world? As the ink dries of the story of our lives, I wonder how people will view how we have faced this moment, that we were born at this moment to help humanity to move forward to help those who have a tender heart, who come and give healing to the sick, comfort to the bereaved. Hold the hand of someone who ebbs away from this world. I wonder in the future how people will look back and see how we reacted to this situation. Do we lay a path of peace? Do we cross the road when this situation has passed and spend a moment with someone and say, how are you today? We have been great distance. We have seen so much things in our lives, but we find it hard to help the person just a few meters away. 
who are also imprisoned in a house, maybe not sleeping because they are full of worry, of uncertainty of what is to come. Today is now, tomorrow is a mystery, but soon to become the present. So if I am to place into your hands now a piece of wood, Will you use this wood to be burnt in a fire or will you stand and hold it for a moment and make from it something from your imagination that can be used to show that something after death can be given into such beautiful life? So as we sit here in the confinements of these four walls, we see a place where we come and we call home. But the spiritual world join us now and say this world in which you live is just a moment until you come back to our arms. I wonder now, as we come to serve, what can we truly do for the spirit world? The spirit world must be worried for their families that live here on earth. Instead of us saying to the spirit world, how can we serve and serve you well? Why can't we place ourselves in hands of service and say, what can I do to stop you worrying for those you have left behind? When death comes and touches, you never lose anyone. You only lose your voice to this world. And through certain individuals, we find our voice once more to bring you comfort, to know that death is but a bend in a road. With these words we speak to you now, with these words we share to your heart, these words have always been there, but we're reminding you what you already know. Like the bird that sings reminds you that they have always been there. So stop now. Stop living in the past or in the future and listen to the eternal breath. And ask your soul, how will we face this situation? And if we are to face it alone, we are the spark of light on the darkest night. We will shine bright, we will shine, and others will join. Sometimes the sun must set, all life and light seems to go, for us to see the stars that have always shined, hidden by a greater light. That light will always be there on your darkest night. So let us now raise the cup that death himself has poured, the milk of human kindness to celebrate that life and love is eternal. We have faced the uncertainty, but use this time wisely to strengthen who you are and to give yourself to a higher mind that once again will bring us peace. I thank you for listening to these words and wherever possible, allow this great power to bring you warmth and smiles on your coldest and darkest night. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. Those words I'm sure have landed within the souls of many and have touched many hearts as well and will last with them for days and the weeks to come. So thank you very much. Now, before we move into the next part of our service where Phil will demonstrate his mediumship, we've got some music that will 
shift things a little in order to feel to be able to work. So allow your hearts to come together. Love the joy, allow the joy to be there within your souls and allow us to come together as we celebrate life and we look towards that part of the service where mediumship is demonstrated. Thanks very much. As we enter into the part of the service where Phil will demonstrate his mediumship, there are a few things that those of you that are on Zoom need to know. The way Phil will work is that he will give a few pieces of information and for those of you on Zoom, you can interact and you can receive a contact. For those of you that are on Facebook, unfortunately, the modern technology means that you can only watch and enjoy. But when Phil has given his information, if you understand absolutely everything, then please, Sandra will share with you, please put the um, your hand up in terms of Zoom, or if you can't work with the controls, then wave frantically on your screen. But only if you can understand absolutely everything. If you can, then Sandra will bring you in and you will be on a direct line with Phil and your loved ones, and he'll be able to give a contact for you. Um, I'd like to now pass the, this part of the service over to Phil for demonstration of mediumship. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Kerry, Sandra, Scott, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. It's an absolute pleasure to be part of this service and a pleasure to be part of what we're putting together here at Dunfermline Ask and We Don't Die. I don't know about you guys, but I can sit and listen to Scott talk all evening. His voice just echoes that poeticness about it and his actual thinking and logic and philosophy makes your mind drift and think deeply. So it's an absolute pleasure to listen to you, Scott. So I'm just going to ask Kerry just to bring people up on screen, if that's possible. Sandra. In fact, Sandra's going to do that. So in a few moments, Sandra's going to do the screen and bring it all up for me. And I'm going to do my absolute best to uh, be clear, be precise as I possibly can. But please, ladies and gentlemen, if you've not seen a demonstration of mediumship before, be open minded um, and, and listen to what is brought forward. Um, I'm very disciplined. I won't make things. Fit. I will work through it. So please work with me. Thank you, Sandra. Oh, yes. Hello, everybody. This may be a new for everyone. And with our system here, unfortunately, we cannot see you. So Carrie had asked you to wave, but unfortunately, your camera is off unless you are someone who is brought into the chat room with us. So either on your iPhone, mobile phone, or your computer, down at the bottom, there should be a place where you can raise your hand. Uh, many people are practicing with that right now, and your hand will show on your side as a blue hand. And uh, if you undo it, it'll just show as a neutral hand. So from our side, what I will be able to see is everyone with their hands raised. So I'm going to ask if you can accept absolutely every bit of information, only you um, click on the blue hand, if you would, or on the hand, it will turn blue. If you don't recognize it, just don't. We have a very large crowd here today. This is the very first time we've done something like this. So we got every finger and toe crossed that technology works along with us. So we'll just play along with it. So I'm gonna lower all the hands now. So if people no longer uh, touch their hand raised button and we'll let Phil begin and we'll, just take it how it goes. Okay, we'll see what happens. Um, again, first time we've done this, so we'll see where we go. Um, as I become aware of the spirit world here, I know that I have mother with me. Now, I know with mother as well, she passes with a cancerous condition, but I also hear the name of Margaret. Um, and I actually feel here, and I had a similar contact recently, I wanna talk about Margaret, whose mum, who should be called Margaret, and I know here as well, um, that she passed with a cancerous condition. But I also know here uh, as well, she's a very strong-minded lady. So oh. see if anyone puts their hand up. Sorry. This is audience participation. If you can recognize all of that information. Uh, we have Marsha that understands all that information and Joy. 
ladies, if for some reason you accidentally press that and it doesn't apply to you, you can simply press the, your hand button again. Right now, Phil, we have three people, Marsha, Joy, and Patricia. That's who fine. Have said so yes. I'm going to go a little bit further then, just to narrow this down. Um, it also feels here that where mum was concerned, I know the person I want to um, be talking to would have been with mum right at the end when she passed, and I know they would have been caring for her as well. And I know mum was not able to speak at the end either. All right. Uh, I don't know if I should lower your hands or if all three are still remain up there, Marsha, Joy, and Patricia. If you, okay, we have narrowed it down to Marsha and Joy. Okay, that's fine here. Um, even though I've never met Marsha, I just kept from being drawn to that name. Um, but it just feels here that as she was there when mother passed, she was foot stroking the face and almost easing her away sort of thing. So I know here she was stroking the face and easing her away. Okay, both Marsha and Joy are still have their hands up. Would you like me to bring one of them into the room? Yes, please. Yeah. We can bring Marsha in first because I keep on being drawn to that name. Okay, Marsha. So from on my side, I'm going to click a allow to talk button and you should pop up with uh, something that we can hear you and see you. Let's see, Marsha, can you say a few words and see if we can yes. hear you? Oh, hello. There you All are. Right. Hi, welcome. Hi. Hello, Marsha. I can hear you, but I can't see you, so we can work around that. Don't worry. Um, I know here, as I've got mother with me, I know that she was a very strong-minded lady, a lady that liked to do things her own way. Yes. Okay. And I also know as well, it wasn't easy for her to go through that condition. And I'm not just talking about the illness. It feels like loss of independence. Yes. Uh, and it also feels here, she would be quite strong and stubborn, please forgive me for using that word, because I know as well, she would have tried to put a face on to protect everybody else. That's correct. And I also know here, she didn't make it easy for the doctors either, did she? <laughs> no. <laughs> because I know as well, um, she's trying to put up a fight with me as well, because I know she wants to keep her dignity. Um, but I also know here, I don't want to be remembered how things were at the end. I want to be remembered as that bright lady that got everyone together that was very family orientated. Yes, definitely. And I know here as well, she liked nothing more than the family getting together at birthdays and Christmas as well. Yes. And even I know where um, people weren't always wholeheartedly involved in it, people put on uh, an act to, say, um, to show that they were taking part just to keep her happy. Yes. Because I also know as well, if they didn't, mum could be quite <laughs> objective to saying something, book your ideas up, pull your face together. Do you understand? Yes, I do. Because I know here uh, as well, but I also know that mum has been with you quite recently because I feel here you've been looking through photographs as well. Yes, that's true. And I know here these photographs, some of them were all black and white ones that you have as well, please. Yes. Uh, and again, it's almost where um, I have the photographs uh, and it's, I'm trying not to laugh because some people on the photographs, you don't know who they are. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> because I know here mum says, well, I'm pointing people out. I know her, her name was Margaret, but she mentions a Martha as well that should be on the photographs and a John that's on the photographs as well, please. Yes. Because I also know on the photographs there will be names written on the back as well. That's correct. And I also know there's not just names, there should be dates as well, please. Yes. And I also know there should be an Edward in the spirit world that should be on the photographs as well. Yes. Good. Um, and again here, but I also know with your mum, she had a fantastic sense of humour as well. It's mm -hmm. almost worse she could just bring one liners out. Yes, that's true. Because again, it's almost like everyone that was round about, even if they were family or not, they would be on the photographs here. That's true. Because I know she's referring to the milkman and people like that, but I know it's just a sense of humour here mm -hmm. uh, uh, as well. Mm -hmm. But I know with your mum, there's a real soft side to her. And I know that she liked to uh, keep um, birthday cards, Christmas cards and things like that. Very for sentimental reasons. Yes. Uh, and again, 
it's not just receiving the act of receiving the card, it's actually the words in the card. The more words, the more poignant they are, she would absolutely love the card and make reference to it. That's true. And I know that is because she's making reference to Scott's philosophy, how meaningful it was, how poetic it was. So I know your mum's mind had a way of literature and looking into things as well. Yes. Bear with me, I'll just take a drink of my green bottle. Sure. I also know with your mum um, that she liked to do little bits of things for people as well. As long as she was helping, as long as she was doing something, she seems to be quite happy. Yes, that's true. But again here, and I know she's referencing that, and it's almost like to everybody that's listening on Zoom and everyone that's listening on Facebook, anything that we can do at this present time will be gratefully received by the spirit world and also by mankind here as well. Because your mum could take things to heart quite a lot as well, couldn't she? Yes, yeah, she could. Especially what she was seeing out there in life and on the news as well. Yes. And I also feel that she was one for always switching the news on at a particular time of the day and never missed out. That's true. <laughs> because again, I want you to, I'm sorry for using this word, but it feels like I want to tell people to shut up and just let me listen to the news and let me listen to what's going on. Yes. And it's almost the only time I get for myself because I'm always doing things for everybody else. That's true. <laughs> and I know also mum, um, she could have a little bit of a rant at times, couldn't she? Yes. <laughs> Especially when she was doing chores around the house because she would moan about, well, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, and nobody else is helping me. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's yeah. fine. But again, I want to go back to the memories of the families together here, and it feels where we used to uh, play cards together as well. Yes. Uh, and again, it, it's almost where um, I, I want to talk about where um, mum was always frustrated that she could never win a game. <laughs> yes. Because I know here she's blaming dad for this because he's got cards up his sleeve. <laughs> yes. And it's almost like she'd say, well, somebody's cheating and everything else. But I know there will be memories of, of doing this for uh, coins as well, money as well. It's almost but small change. Yes, that's true. Okay. But I also know there's chocolate involved as well. <laughs> yes. Because again, it's almost like I know I'm happy, but I also know that people let mum win to give her that chocolate as well. <laughs> yes. Because again, there's just this sense that mum knew about that. Uh, and again, it's almost where I want to say she was a lot more privy to what was going on than many others uh, as well. Yes. But I also know with your mum, she didn't come from a very... How can I put the wealthy background? That's true. And I know that she may do amend at times as well, didn't she? Yes, she did. Because I also know here she would have made clothes for people as well. Yes. Um, because I also know she would have made a dress in particular for you. Yes, definitely. Uh, and again, it feels where you've still got some of mum's clothes as well. Yes. Uh, uh, and again here, you must have mum's sewing kit as well, please. Yes. Uh, and again, you've, you've held this just recently as well. Actually, yes. yes. I know you have, because she tells me. But I know here, there's just this sense where mum says, I want you to know by that fact that I'm watching over you, I'm keeping an eye on you, because you said to me on the day that I died, let me know that I'm okay when I get to the spirit world. Yes. Because she wants to keep that promise for you, but mm -hmm. also she says, make sure, you said to her, make sure you look after us. She's doing that. She wants to keep that promise as well. And I know here she wants to give you a kiss back because I know you gave her a kiss on the face as well. Yes. But she says that was not the last time because you stayed with her for best part of an hour afterwards, still talking to her as well. Yes. Good. Because I know she makes me aware of this. And I also know here, just before I bring an end to the contact, that um, you've had dreams where she's been in them as well. Yes. And I know they were very lifelike because you can still remember them by full colour, by full detail, by full sound. 
Yes. Because I know here, she says, I also kept another promise where you asked me to come personally to you and let you know that I was okay. Yes. And I'm going to leave you with her love. And I'm going to leave you with the words she's just said to me, because she's just said to me, you'll do for me, Philip. So that's a thank you for me. So I'm good. I'm pleased about <laughs> that. But I know here, and she always said pleases and thank yous, didn't she? Yes, she did. Because I know here she says manners um, maketh the woman. And I know there's a saying manneth maketh the man sort of thing, but she says maketh the woman. I know that morals and everything was really important to her as well. Yes, it was. But there's just one memory before I, I break the link here. We must have lived at one time in what we call in the UK a cul-de-sac. Yes. And I also know there would have been cherry, like a cherry tree or a blossom tree there as well. Yes, that's true. Because it just feels here. Now, would I be right in saying that that cul-de-sac was named after a tree of some kind? Uh, yes, that's Good. true. Even though I can't get the tree, I know that I, I just know that it was named after a tree, almost like chestnut or oak, oak but I know it's there. Um, in fact, bear with me. Um, but I also know as I enter that um, cul-de-sac to the right hand side, that's where we would have lived. Yes. Good. And I know you've been back past there, she says, since I've gone. Yes. <laughs> and she says how it has changed. Definitely. Yes. Good. So I'm going to leave you with those memories, but leave you with the knowledge that mum's around, her mind is sound, because I know it was questioned, but again, it's just that love that she wants to bring for you and let you know um, that she's with you every step of the way through these times at the moment, because you still talk to her and you asked her to come today as well, didn't you? Yes, I did. And she says, I listen to you all the time. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to leave her love with you and say thank you very, very much. Thank you so much. I really You're welcome, Marsha. You're welcome. Oh, thank you, Phil. Thank you, Marsha. I'm going to lower all hands if everybody keeps their fingers off the buttons for a moment. And I love hearing this because all of our loved ones are here housebound with us as well. Marsha's mm -hmm. mom was just the voice, but yes. Okay. So am I right to go again? Absolutely. Absolutely. Let's fingers crossed we get the same kind of contact or, or that style or evidence as well. Um, I do believe now that I have somebody's son with me here. As I work with son, I know that he passes in a very tragic accident. I know that the accident wasn't very pleasant um, and I'll leave that there for a moment. But I know there's just this sense of I want to reach out here but I also know I've got a feeling here this app either happened happened I can't get my words out happened at work or on my way to work as well okay ladies and gentlemen if you would raise your hands if you can accept this son an unpleasant accident may have happened around work or on his way to work all righty Phil, so far no hands raised. That's all right, just give it a second. Mm. I know this is new to everybody, this kind of Zoom room. Ah, we have Sherry who has raised her hand. Good, okay, can we bring Sherry in? Please? Of course we can. Sherry, I am promoting you to a panelist. And allowing you to talk. Sherry, if you can unmute yourself and some oh, say hello to Phil. Hi, hello, Phil. Sherry. Hello. It's been a while. Oh, let me take off my video. I mean, no, it's all right. You I... can leave it like that if you want. I don't need to. Well, see I'm you. happy to leave it, but you know me, so I would love I to. I do. Be... I do. But yes, let's be I've... clear. Okay. Let's be clear. I've never given you a contact, have I? No, no, we've never. I never have, but I was. I presented once in Orlando when you That's were. That's correct. I remember you from there, okay? So if so I. You... I... But I have a son that died accidentally. It was not on the way to work, okay. though. That, that, That's fine. Okay, just say yes is a no. That's fine. So you understand, son in the spirit world who died in a tragic accident. It, well, yes, I would consider it a tragic accident. Okay. Would you understand where it was very unpleasant? And it's not just about losing the son, but the accident was unpleasant. 
See, I'm not, I can't really take that. I mean, um, I don't know. Um, I, you know, um, would you like me to tell you what? No, 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 absolutely no. not. Okay, okay. Absolutely not. Please don't share it, share it. Um, because I know what I've got with me and I'm not going to write it. Into right. detail. Okay. So, Sandra, is anybody else put their hand up? There is another Sherry and a Jessica that have both put their hands okay. up. Okay. So let's just bring in, and I feel drawn to Jessica, actually. Okay. Jessica. I'm going Thank you for listening, Sherry Pearl. Of course. Stay there, just in case. Yeah. Okay. So Jessica, I'm clicking the allow to talk button. Jessica, you may have to mute yourself from your side. There you go. Jessica, can you hear us? Yes, I can. Oh, hello. Hello. Good. Hello, Jessica. Hello. Hello. So you understand you have a son in the spirit world and he would have passed in a, in a tragic accident. Yes. And it would have been either something to do with either him working or going to work. No. Doesn't. Okay. Let me just work with this for a second. Where the accident was concerned, would I be right in saying it wasn't pleasant? Yes. That's fine, because that's what I have. But I, then I just want to look at something. Would I be right in saying either the medical services worked on him? Yes. Because I know here I've just got to look at this working in a different way or the work, how it was. But I also know with your son, he, he was quite a positive-minded young man as well. Yes. And again, it feels where he was very popular, not just to the family, but to a lot of people. Absolutely. Because again, it feels like everyone looked up to him. And I know it was a shock to hear about his passing. Yes. But I also know with your son as well, that he, had, he could have a joke or he could have a really good sense of humor as well. Yes. Because it feels like here, even though I, I know how I've died, but I don't want to dwell on it, but I want to look on the brighter side of life as well. Yes. And it's almost like a trait of his, you always look forward, never look back. Yep. Because again here, and I know here, he had that selflessness about him because I know that he would have helped other people around look at life that way. He seems to have that ability to inspire and uplift people as well. Yes, absolutely. Um, and again here, it feels where there's still either pictures. Now, I feel this is to do with the internet of your son. So there must be either a Facebook profile or something still of your son. Yes. Because I know here it feels like people have left uh, messages and personal things and memories on it. Yes. Because again, it's just acknowledging how he's still inspiring people. And I know you still go back to that page and read them and you've read several of them over and over again. Yes. Because he lets me know that he's been with you. Uh, and again here, it's almost where you've said the words to him because he's heard you. You will not believe the response people still have to you. Yes. Um, but I also feel his picture was in the newspaper as well, please. Um, yeah, there, there were articles and yeah. I, because I, I know he shows me them uh, as well, but it's almost here where he's making that joke, that humour, because this is his mindset, that I got my 15 minutes of fame. <laughs> you could say that. Exactly. So I know here he doesn't want to look on, on, a, on a, um, anything dull, but he also takes me to where we used to live. He's got this memory within his mind where the house was elevated from the road. Yes where there's almost like steps down. Steps down? Yes. Um, uh, steps up to the house. Yes, that's, that's what I mean, sorry. Wrong way around, but yeah, you know okay. what I mean. So that's fine. So uh, again, here is just bring, bringing me there. But there must be memories, because the way that he's putting this within my mind is very much where he used to sit on the steps. Um, yeah, I actually have a picture of him sitting in steps. Good. Yep. 
good because I know he keeps on showing me this because it's almost you've been asking for signs of him and asking for those things that are not commonly known. And I know this is why he presents himself on the steps as well. But I also know you've been asking for him to come close because I know that you felt him, you felt his presence where it's almost like everything stands up. Yes. Because I know here you've questioned it and he also keeps on shouting out mum. So I know you've heard his voice shout mum, but you've put it down to your imagination. Yes. Because again, he's reaching out and doing everything that you're asking him to do as well. And I also know that you have a photograph displayed of him in your living room, your front room as well. Yes. And I know that you talk to him all the time, don't you? Yes, I do. And I know that most days you're moving him and moving him around, but also you've kissed that photograph. Um, I kiss my phone photograph every night. Ah, that's fine, okay. But I know he's just referencing to kissing the photograph as well. But what would be right in saying you also have, because you mentioned your phone, you also have um, voicemails as well, please? Um... I don't think I do, actually. Well, bear with me. There must be either text messages, because I know there's something here about messages. I do have text messages, That's yes. That's fine, because, okay, my mind just jumped and ran ahead where I should have checked it. But I know here he makes me aware of this. Uh, and again, I know you don't just kiss the phone. You keep on enlarging the picture on the phone as well, don't you? Yeah. Uh, and again, here. Um, but it's almost... Um, Thank you. Uh, and would I be right in saying within his room, you've still got some of his clothes? Yes. Uh, and again, you sit in there and talk to him as well? Yes. Because I know he's acknowledging this to me. And it's almost like you want to know he's been around you. Uh, it's either something that's moved within your kitchen as well. Um, hmm. I don't know of anything moved. Okay. What have you right in saying that you've either had to rearrange the pans or something, the way you stack them or place them just recently? Yeah, yeah. I don't mean just using them. The clutter. Yes. That's fine, because I know here he's just saying he's the one responsible for different things. And it's almost like we're laughing and joking and always either blaming him and saying it's just him being around. <laughs> yeah. Understand? And again, he's just acknowledging because I know we want evidence of afterlife but he also wants you to know he's around you because I know that you felt quite low recently and I'm not going to open that up. Understand? Yes. Good. Because I know here he's just saying, mum, I'm doing my best to lift you and get you through things uh, as well. Um, and also you must stand at the back or ki sorry, kitchen window looking out of the window as well. Yes. And I know you daydream and you think about him as well. Yes. And I also know when that's happened, you've turned almost like thinking he is there with you as well. Yes. Because I know here he's doing everything he can to let you, his mum, know that he loves you and he's around you trying to bring that upliftment at the moment as well. But to let you know he's actually physically there with you trying to really uplift your soul. That's awesome. Bear with me one second here. Um, I know we're a little bit into um, the year already, um, but I know at Christmas there was either a favourite ornament you put out that remind you of him. Yes. And I feel like it was something he made as well. Yes. Because I know he wants to acknowledge that, but I know you put it in pride of place, he tells me, just to let you know that he still knows you do that as well. Yes. And I actually feel you did something else then as well, because he's letting me know here, you either put milk and cookies out in memory of him as well. Um, I don't know that we did this year. But I know there was something done in memory, because I know it's just the way he's put, uh, it's either an extra plate or an extra glass that was put out. Yes, yes. That's yes. fine, because I'm not, not going to let go of it. I'm not one of them mediums that makes it fit. I want to make sure that I get it right for you as well. Um, but I know here uh, there's a celebration planned in his memory coming up as well. Um, not, not right now. Bear with me. And he's also saying happy birthday. So there must be a birthday coming up 
Yes, his little sister. That's fine. And that's the celebration I want to acknowledge with him because I know he keeps on saying happy birthday as well. And I know because you mentioned the sister, the way that he brings my mind to this, it's almost like the little sister has been asking about him or talking about him. Yes. Because I know that she's aware of his presence and his spirit around as well, uplifting and helping wherever he can. Yes. So I'm going to leave his love with you and say thank you for allowing me to do that. And thank you for coming forward and allowing me to work with you, Jessica. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. All right. Thank you, Phil. Thank you, Jessica. Thank you. Are we okay, Sandra? We're great, Phil. How are you? We're great. Good. Mm -hmm. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm going to see if anybody else wants to come forward. We never push. We never strain. We just let them come forward if they need to be here oh okay um i know that i have father in the spirit world i know that his name should be john i know i'm not with you though sandra um but i know here um i know there's a um i want to say um he's either he passes within a, a either road traffic accident as well all right so father Father, John, and it's a road traffic accident. All right, ladies and gentlemen, if you can accept all this information, if you could put your hand up, virtually that is. All right, we have Debbie, Annette, and Deborah, three ladies oh, well, that have that raised their hand. Down to one, okay. Um, but where I want to say between the three of you, I know it was instant. I want to say it just was instant. He felt no pain and, and lights have gone out sort of thing. All right, ladies, if you can still keep this information, keep your hand raised. We have uh, Annette, Deborah, and Debbie. Well, still? Still. Okay, that's fine. Well, and yeah. I actually feel that it was involved with another motor vehicle, and I'm not sure if it was, um, I feel it was a truck as well, please. Okay, ladies, involved with a truck. Uh, we have two remaining. We have Deborah and Debbie. Okay, I'm Deborah and Debbie. Can I bring Deborah in, or could you bring Deborah in for me, please? I so sure can. Here we go. All right, Deborah, just give me a second. I'm going to un allow you to talk on this side. And I think on your side, you can unmute yourself. Maybe I can do it. Let's see. All right, Deborah, can we have your voice? Hello. Hello, Hello we can hear you. Great. Yeah, yeah. So you understand your dad, John, in the spirit world that passed in a motor vehicle accident with a truck, please. I know I'm only supposed to say yes or no. Um, I know two Johns. One was young John and his dad was John. And young John got killed in a motor accident and it was a lorry. Uh, that's fine. I'll go with that. And that's a beautiful accent you've got. You're from my part of the world. Thank <laughs> you. Got... Somebody in Fife. <laughs> ah, yep, yeah, absolutely. We're in Fife as well. So that's where we go. Um, so I know here then if I've got the wrong relationship, but I'm going to stick with the evidence because I heard the name of John and I know it's a motor accident and I know it was a truck. But I also know with the young John here, um, I want to say he was a bit of a character. Yes. Uh, and when I say character, it feels like I just want to have fun um, and make a joke of things and have a laugh about things and not try and take life too seriously. Yeah. Because I know that, and don't get me wrong, I know he could be serious at times and I, I know he worked very long hours and worked really hard as well. And I know some of his grammar wasn't always politically correct as well. Yeah. Okay, because there's one or two words here that I'm having to change as well, please. Okay. But I also feel that he was a character and a lot of people knew him as well. That's right. Because again, it just feels I've got an answer for everything. I've got a, lo a voice louder than everybody else's. Um, and if I'm right here as well, he would have had tattoos as well, please. Yes. Okay, uh, and again, it feels where I'm quite a big built young lad as well. Yeah. 
because I know here I want my arms out, I want the tattoos out. In fact, he was a little bit full of himself in a good way. That's right, was. Because okay. he says, I want everyone to see my guns. So I know here he's referring to his muscles and everything else uh, as well. But I also know uh, as well, um, um, with his build, he can make a joke out of himself. Uh, so I know he had that sense of humour that was a good way. It was never derogatory of people. He had a brilliant sense of humour. He did, because, uh, I, again, and it's almost like if I walk into a local pub, everyone will buy me a drink. That's right, yes. Yeah, because I, I don't know, in Scotland we like to drink, okay, but I know here it's just because his popularity and everyone wants to be his friend and he's up, and it's almost like I know a man that could do this for me, a man that could get that for me, and he's always got those other characters around him. Yeah, that's right. Okay, um, and I also feel here where he would have lived would have been near either tenement flats or flats as well, please. Yes. And I also feel that where he lived there would have been like a council estate as well. Yes. Uh, and it, it just feels where these flats were, they would have been near the roundabout as well. There's like a roundabout nearby. That's right. Because um, again, it's almost like there must be memories of him in his younger days. So he must have lived there for quite some time. Mm -hmm. That's right. Because again, there's a sense of in my younger days, when I was a little bit of a, a, a rogue sort of thing, I'd just go round the roundabout with my music blurring and the window open. Mm -hmm. And he used to, almost everybody knew him by first name terms on that estate as well. That's right, yeah. But would I be right in saying where he used to live would have been in one of the flats? Mm, no. Then bear with me, let me work with this just for a second. Um, he takes me to wherever, wherever he lived, he must have known people in the flat, either very close friends, not just people he acquainted with, but very close friends. Mm, could have been, I'm not sure. Bear with me, Deborah. Would I be right in saying that it's you that used to live in a flat or an apartment? Yes. That's fine, because I know if it's not him, it has to be the recipient. But I know here, it just makes my mind, and you must have lived close by him as well. Yeah. Because there must be memories where you heard his voice, you couldn't see him, but he is loud, you can hear him when he's had one or two drinks on the way back home from the pub. <laughs> yeah. Yep, okay. And I also know that he's singing to himself, because he's by himself, but he's a happy, merry, drunken Scotsman. Yeah, that's, that's right. Okay. Yeah. Because I know he would not harm a flea unless he was bothered. That's right. And I know the reason why he keeps on coming around and bringing these memories of yesteryear and everything else. It's because you've been looking back in life and you've felt that little bit down and he just wants to remind you of the good old days and how things used to be, where everyone interacted and everyone socialised together and everyone knew each other. Yeah because he says how different it is now, how different it is. Um, he also makes me aware when he passed and his funeral was, that there was almost a very large procession at his funeral because everyone turned out to it. Yeah. Uh, and again, I want to say that people celebrated his life. They would have worn coloured shirts and everything. Yes. Because he makes me aware where they would have had football tops on and different things. Yeah. Because he's, really? He, he, he's, he's winding up. I'm a Liverpool fan, but he's showing me a Manchester United top, and I'm thinking, no, I don't want to see that. Um, but I know here, it's just the way that he would deliberately wind people up at any opportunity, but it was always in a good way. Yeah. And I know with that, he's trying to bring a lot of upliftment, and I know you've been talking to somebody before we were locked down, there was conversations about him as well. Yeah. Because he's just let me know where you were talking fondly and there were some happy memories. I'm going to be very clean here where either he got too drunk and lost some clothing. Um, I can't think of it. 
if he if I said he wasn't shy at coming forward, would you understand? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, because <laughs> I know here, but I know there's a lot of things and he was very well liked and he's saying thank you for the time that you gave him and the time you spent with him. And it is about everyone pulling together at the moment. And it is that family community spirit that will get us through this time he's mentioning. So I know here his words are not just for you, but for everybody listening as well. So Deborah, I'm going to leave John's love with you and say thank you very, very much for allowing me to do that for you as well. Thank you very much. You're welcome, Deborah. I'm thank you. That thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been my great pleasure to work um, as part of this service with this fabulous team that um, Sandra's put together, that Kerry's organised with Dunfermline Ask, to bring a live world service. And just bear with me while I scream, because she's put a chair on my foot. Oh, um, that's fine. But again, it's been an absolute pleasure to demonstrate, and I hope those people out there have taken encouragement from it and know that this is a way forward for us and a way to reach out for us all. So thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry about the suit. You're all right. I'll scream <laughs> later. <laughs> I'd like to, on behalf of the We Don't Die and Don't Firm and Ask team, to thank you very much you're to yourself for the um, demonstration of mediumship. Thank you very much, Scott for that wonderful demonstration of philosophy in the address. And thank you, Sandra, for that wonderful reading as well. So as we bring our service towards a close, I'd like to thank everybody for being part of this. This is truly a worldwide divine service. We have people watching in Australia, in Asia, in Europe, in Canada, and in America. So we are truly blessed to be able to reach all of you in such a wonderful way. And how better can we do that with such marvelous demonstrations of philosophy and demonstrations of mediumship. I'm truly honored to be part of that. And thank you to you, Sandra, for bringing us all together. It's truly been a wonderful experience. So stay well, everybody. Stay loved. And know that your loved ones are closer than you could ever dream of. I'm going to pass it over to you, Sandra. Well, thank you very much. Um, before we have our closing prayer, I would just like to say next Sunday, we're going to do this again. In fact, while we're all housebound, we're doing them every Sunday. You can register at We Don't Die Radio dot com. There's going to be a different link for every Sunday. Uh, the link that you use today, if you're with us on Zoom, will eventually show the replay of this, so you can feel free to share as well. After our closing prayer, I do ask that you just stay on board because we're going to play a song that will unite us all. It's We Are the World, and just you can depart at your leisure, but we'll be playing that at the end. So if we could just ask our fabulous uh, Mr. Phil to... Lead us in a closing Elizabeth. prayer. I like that. <laughs> mm -hmm. There we go. Ladies and gentlemen, if you can join with me in this time and this moment, as one race, as one population, as one world, as we join together the unseen world that we've just communed with and ourselves. Great infinite spirit, we have stood before you once more, joined together as brother and sister, in one mankind, bringing everyone together heart, soul, but also those war-torn countries that have stopped fighting to join in this war of the unseen, to bring forward that positivity and upliftment, to bring healing to where it's needed. As those that have lost people, let them receive that upliftment of joy, knowing their loved ones still live on. But most of all, we all stand together as one, uniting this world, not just with the spirit world, but within each other's love, that love that can outfit and outdo any war of any kind. Amen. Thank you very much. And thank you to everyone. And we're going to close now with We Are the World. And have a great week. And we will see you next week. <laughs>